We have to start here by discussing gold, trading at all-time highs as we speak, continuing to rise higher. Obviously, people very excited about that. I wanted you to give us your thoughts on gold's rise here and how you see the gold market performing for the rest of the year and beyond. Yeah, I, I think gold looks great here. I think it's um, about to break out. That's obviously made a new closing high uh, this week. And I see the dollar rolling over interest rates um, after a, a backup beginning to um, move down again. And I think they'll go to um, probably go towards 3% before they correct again. So, so you've got the dollar and interest rates working in the right direction for gold. And I think that's the signal that gold's about to uh, break out of this trading range. It's been in for quite some time. And, uh, you know, my, my forecast is 3,000. Uh, I've got a, a forecast of a global bust starting probably later this year into next year. Um, and I just call it a pre-bust uh, forecast of 3,000 on gold. And I that's to me, that's a conservative estimate. I think, if anything, it's going to exceed that. So do you think in the case of a global bust that we will see gold fall along with the rest of the market, at least initially, before potentially climbing back up? Or, or how do you see that scenario playing out for gold? Yeah, global bust is um, in my you know my um, definition of a global bust is something that's worse than our typical recession, uh, but not drawn out like a depression. So it might feel like a depression, but it'll probably be contained in a twelve to eighteen month time frame with a lot of uh, you know financial uh, p a big financial piece to it. So sort of like two thousand eight nine, but um, probably worse. So in that kind of a scenario, I think pretty much all assets other than, you know, government guaranteed treasuries and the U.S. dollar, which will get a flight to safety bid at that time. Other than those things, I think most other assets are going to get hit. So gold will get hit, probably not as hard as the equity markets, certainly not as hard as the equity markets, but I think um, could get hit pretty hard, but it's from that higher level. And you mentioned dollar weakness. Uh, what what are the signs you're seeing right now that lead you to believe the dollar could be headed lower? Yeah, it's mostly you know the charts, the technicals suggest that it's rolling over, uh, and I've expected that. We've had you know we had that big move down a couple of years ago from 115 down below 100 on DXY, and you know we've spent many months here kind of consolidating that. It it started to go again, and then it had another counter trend rally i think that counter trend rally has pretty much run its course and it just looks now like uh the dollar's getting heavy and once it gets going i suspect we'll see it down to the mid 90s pretty quickly and then from there you know down to 90 and from there i have a, a forecast again probably a 2024 forecast of 80 so you know from from 103 and change now you know, down to 80 is a, a big, big drop. And that will certainly help gold and silver rough. Well, I would like to get your long-term forecast on this trend of de-dollarization that seems to be occurring. Different people place different levels of emphasis on it. Some believe it's kind of not something that's even that important. And the US dollar is going to be around in a significant way for a long time to come. Um, I'm wondering what your thoughts are there with the BRICS nations, Saudi Arabia, as you mentioned, divesting themselves of the dollar when it comes to international trade. Is this a significant event in your view? Is this How long do you think it's going to take to play out before it, it has a major impact? And is this a, ultimately a tailwind for gold? Yeah, I, I certainly think the dollar will come under pressure in the second half of this decade. You get through this global bust. And I think that will be the peak in the dollar, and it'll be all down from, downhill from there. How fast is hard to know because you know this is going to be a global bust, and as we know, when when we catch cold, uh, you know the rest of the world catches pneumonia, and this is going to be us catching pneumonia. So the rest of the world is going to be in really rough shape. I just don't see where China, Russia, or anybody else is in a position to replace the dollar as a as a trade currency. So. They can talk about it all they want and try to plot against the dollar all they want. I think it's going to be a long process. So certainly the next five years, the dollar is still going to be, you know, the king of the hill in terms of trading, in terms of trade. Um, 
you know, as we get to later in the decade, I'm forecasting a huge inflation cycle as a result of what um, what the Fed has to do and all central banks, frankly, has to have to do uh, during the bust to counter the bust and pull us out of it. It'll be a free falling financial system during the bust. And so they're going to be printing and printing and printing. Probably my, my estimate is be something four or five times what we saw in 2020, 21. So, I mean, 20 trillion coming out of the Fed is my estimate. Uh, it could be a little less or more. Um, but that kind of number is going to trigger, uh, and all central banks doing something similar proportionally, that's going to trigger a huge inflation cycle that will far surpass, I think, the early 80s and certainly what we've seen in, of late. Um, and so as you get to the end of the decade, you could be looking at, you know, high double digit interest rates, high double digit inflation, um, and and a you know, obviously a budget that can't be serviced. Um, or you know, we're gonna really struggle. Um, again, it's a worldwide problem, but focused on the US, I think we're gonna have a hard time making the case that the dollar is something sound and where people want to be. So um, you know, later in this decade, I think the dollar is going to be under a lot of pressure. You know, you could see it that, you know, DXY could be under 50 by the end of the decade uh, and then, you know, keep going from there. So so I, I, I understand the concerns about de-dollarization. I understand all of that. I just think, um, you know, those that are in that camp and think it's something that's coming very quickly, I think it's quick in terms of history. Yes, but quick, not in the next year or two. Yeah, that's a that's an important distinction. Um, I do want to dive into your theory of this global bust in a moment, but before we do, I want to touch on silver here because silver nowhere near its all time highs. Uh, to call it a disappointment for for many is kind of an understatement. Um, you know, it it has had quite a lackluster performance since the last time it it was at its all time high around two thousand eleven. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on silver. Do you view it as a similar asset to gold at this point? Has it become more of an industrial metal in your view? Um, what are your thoughts on silver and how it could potentially perform up ahead? I think silver still is poor man's gold. Um, so it does have some of the characteristics of gold, but it also does have more of an industrial um, you know, piece to it. So yeah, it's been... And, you know, I think it's an understatement to say it's been a disappointment. It's certainly been kind of the asset that has just not performed for a long time uh, and has disappointed lots of us, including me, over a long period of time. I do think you have to kind of step back, though, and realize, because I, I think a lot of the bears on silver or those that were bullish and got really beat up by it, they they think it's been, you know, since 2011, nothing's happened. Well, you had a pretty good run in certainly the silver miners and in silver in 2016. Um, you had a, a very fast big run coming out of the pandemic, March, you know, March 2020. You ran to August 2020 with uh, a, a really big run there. And then from there, it's been a really difficult slog. So it's been consolidating. A lot of the problem, I think, has been the dollar. Um, and it just, you know, silver gets hit a lot harder than gold when it's, you know, in that period of strong dollar. So I think it's all set up now um, where you've come down to some very important support lines. Uh, technically, where fundamentally silver is, is, you know, because of EV, et cetera, silver is going to be in demand. There's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a metal that's going to be in short supply. Um, and it does have the characteristics and when gold runs to 3000, it's going to get a bid. So I have a pretty aggressive forecast pre bust again, uh, of, um, $60, which may seem unbelievable given what we've dealt with this last decade, but $60 between now and, and the bust. Um, and then, um, you know, and I've said, if it, breaks above 60 you could run to 75 very quickly so 60 is my target but 75 wouldn't surprise me um and then it will get hit harder than gold in the bus so what that means if if we you know you don't know whether we're going to 60 or 75 or 50 or whatever if i'm right it goes to 60 plus um 
you know, you could see it back back here, certainly um, in in the bust. And given it's, you know, how easily it can move down, you might even see it down into the teens. So, um, you know, I, I do think people have to be aware it's not a straight line. Post-bust, because of what I see coming as a huge commodity cycle, um, post-bust, I think silver could get to $500, gold could get to $20,000. Uh, but people just have to understand there's, you know, it's not a straight line. There's this bust in between, as I say, it's like standing on the south rim of the Grand Canyon and looking across to the north rim and, and thinking you can walk straight across, and obviously you can't. We're going to have that big canyon in between. So, you know, those that think you want to own silver or gold and just hold it right on through, particularly silver, uh, understand what you're doing if you do that, because it's going to be painful.